Hello and welcome to Koenigsee in Bavaria. It's round seven of the Wiesmann FIBT World Cup Tour. And we are in darkest, deepest Bavaria and it has started to snow. Well, hello everybody, I'm Martin Haven. Sitting alongside me, Olympic champion brakeman Kurt Tomasiewicz. Kurt, we have had a singularly snow-free season so far this year, but the first run of the women's bob has brought some weather with it. Yeah, it's part of the adventure of an outdoor winter sport. You know, you never know what the weather's gonna bring. All week long, it was cloudy, but no or precipitation. Uh, but today, snowing pretty heavily. Well, what about this track? It's the oldest artificial track in the world, concrete canal with refrigeration, and it's still one of the more difficult ones to get down quickly. Yeah, it's there's uh, quite a few very unique points about this track, and the first is the start. The way the start uh, begins is it's very steep, but then it flattens out, and then it gets steep again. So, you know, that could cause a little bit of a hiccup for a lot of the push athletes as they try to time when to load into the sled. The second tricky part of this track is the S-curves. These are very unique compared to any other track. These S-curves, four curves in a row that, you know, there's virtually no space in between the curves. It's just one curve, one left to right, to left to right. Uh, and then a bend away, uh, almost a straight part of the track, but, uh, you know, the sleds are going to take a tap off each wall as they come down into Kreisel. And the snow can only hinder the driver's uh, abilities to get a nice quick line. Well, Kaylee Humphreys, the Olympic champion for Canada, has won five races so far this season, beaten last time out by the girl who's third in the overall World Cup standings, Kathleen Martini, with Sandra Kyriasis lying uh, th second in the rankings, finishing in second spot last weekend at home in Altenburg. And again, another of our German tracks is the third of three so far this season. We had Winterberg before Christmas, then Altenburg, Königsee. And next week, we go to Eagles in Austria. And as you can see, we've got new names uh, in our start list as well. A lot of familiar faces, but a 21 sled field. And Kurt, that means for somebody, <laughs> there's going to be no second heat. And immediately, that puts a bit of mental pressure on. Yeah, that, that one sled that doesn't get a second run, you know, that... That adds a little bit of pressure. You know, you don't want to be that one to stand out, to be the one packing up your crate and packing up your sled into your truck before everybody else is while the second heat's going on. We can see the athletes warming up there outside the big new start building that was part of Munich's bid for the 2018 game. Sandra Kyriasis. There's Jana Pittman in the blue, uh, double world champion in 400 meter hurdles. She'll be on the back of the Australian sled today. And for British fans at home watching in the UK, we have two British women's sleds. We've got uh, bronze medalists from last year's Junior Worlds and Youth Olympic Games. 19-year-old Misha McNeil from Concert County, Durham. She's got Sarah Adams on the back of the sled, and the combined age of that crew is the same as Sandra Kyriasis on her own. So that's, you know, that's youth versus experience, and, and Kurt's experience takes years to build up because you get six training runs down this track per season. Yeah, it's definitely one of the more difficult sports to, to gain experience in and to, to gain those practice runs. You know, the, the rule of thumb is it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert at something, but that's impossible to do that in bobsled where you have, you know, 60 seconds per run maybe two, possibly three runs in one day. So, you know, gaining that 10,000 hours of, of expertise just isn't going to happen in bobsled. Yeah, talk to a Formula One driver or a NASCAR driver and say, OK, you've got six minutes to learn this track, and they'd laugh you out of court, but that's literally what these guys have. Six training runs, and for the men, you have to split that between two and four man. It's not six for each, so you've got to decide which you think needs more polishing. Correct, and two man, or on the men's side, two man and four man requires, you know, a little bit of a different skill between driving the two in that discipline, but, uh, you know, some drivers can, can correlate one to the other and, and get better in two man as they drive a four man sled but it's, it's a hard thing to do. Well, down here in Berchtesgaden, Garden, just outside Berchtesgaden, Garden, by the Königsee, the big royal lake. Uh, King Ludwig of Bavaria was the last uh, royal ruler of this uh, Freistaat, as it now is, part of the German Federation. This is a massive sliding area. It's a big home for, for the German sliding, but also for Luge as well as Skeleton and Bobsleigh. And so the town really comes alive when the track's in use. Start list. Seems to be having a few problems with our graphics. Go down seven at a time. Uh, starts with Jamie Grubel of the USA first off. And anybody who's an even number starter might find themselves in a little bit of trouble with the snow. Because if they're going to sweep, it'll probably be after every second sled. Let's get the race underway then. 29 year old Jamie Grubel from Arlington, Massachusetts. Now living in Lake Placid, New York. 
You know, being the first lid down the hill is very, uh, can be very frustrating at times when you see snow coming down because the whole time you know that you're going to be the snow plow. You're going to be the one clearing the path for the other sleds. And although they do send four runners down, a little tough exit out of S4. Well, listen, that was a huge start from her and Emily Azevedo on the back handles. The track record is a 5.25. That was a 5.30. You're going to need that muscle to get you through the snow. Yeah, and I'll say that, Emily, this is one of her favorite tracks to push on because she was with Alana last year, and they tied that push record of 5.25. So 5.30 in the snow first off, that's that's a great push. That really is. A little wriggly through the lower labyrinth, through the Z curve, and then out of the finish corner. Up to the line they come. Steep uphill climb into the finish dock 52 12 track record 51 36 that was set in the world championships here in 2011 by kathleen martini and romy lugs martini of course last week's winner in altenburg and last year's winner here now here's the exit out of that tricky s4 and it looks like she's coming into a straightaway but this is a long stretch where there's not uh, not a lot a driver can do sometimes as they come through those those bends kind of late in the chicane she see she hits that that left wall sends the back end of the sled late kind of whips around as she comes into the the, the big high pressure echo von curve nice looking run from jamie grubel 52 12 in these conditions that's not bad and she trained yesterday esme campus the netherlands didn't she's always had her best results after taking the final day of training as a rest day so she is sticking with that you did this behind her in this Dutch sled. Come on now, girls! Do this! 29 year old flying doctor Esme Campus. Now, with that snow coming down, a lot of teams are going to want to go right away, right when they see that green light, because as, as they just stand here right now, you can see the snow just piling up. And as soon as they come out of the covered section, they, uh, you know, there's just snow piles right in those grooves right there. So you'd, want to, you'd think that they want to go as soon as possible. Yeah, you see as soon as they come under that arch and into the uh, weather, the grooves disappear from sight. So that means they're full of snow. And of course, you've got to push your way through those. Now, it's a heavy beast, but if you're taking away a hundredth, that might be important. Yeah, all those little snowflakes add up. Good exit out of S4 and down the bend away. And then into Brenner, which sets you up for the Kreisel. 360 degree corner. See the green at the bottom shows that she is up on time. She is ahead of our race leader, Jamie Grubel. Eight hundredths of a second is the margin. She was five hundredths behind at the start, but she had that great S4 and great through bend away. And uh, that's making the difference right now. 22 hundredths of a second ahead. She is starting to pull away nicely. Got a good run through the chicane at the bottom. 51.78. That's only four tenths off the track record. We might see the. Uh, are we going to see the record get blown in the snow? We never know. It would be surprising, but you know, Esme, I give her credit. She had some really great training runs all week. So I know after that, after seeing her practice all week, I'm, I'm not surprised to see her have a great run, even though we've only seen two sleds so far. I'd like to see what the Germans can produce as well. Long striding Judith Viss, one of the tallest girls on tour at the back of that Dutch sled. Again, you can see that the corners are shaded, but you get onto the straights and you're straight into snowplow. You know, the snow is not sticking onto the ground. That the ground is still warm enough for the snow just kind of melts right away. But on the ice, of course, being colder, the snow is going to stay and pile up. Well, here is the veteran Sandra Kiriasis, 37 years old, originally from Winterberg, now lives in Altenburg. Multiple world champion, World Cup champion, and 2006 women's Olympic champion as well. And what will her experience allow her to do here? She's got Berit Viaka. I think this is her first start of a season, Berit Viaka on the back handles. Both these athletes, a lot of experience. But it doesn't correlate to a really great start time, a 5.42. Maybe that snow is piling up a little bit more. OK, 700s behind Esme Campus, who started 5.35, and who leads at the moment. And you can see in the red at the moment. Ooh, takes a little tap coming onto the straight. Still, she held that 700s of a difference. So as Sandra drives the, down this course and you know, hopefully picks up a little more speed, she might be able to catch the, the Dutch sled. 19 Ks into the Chrysler. That's good speed. Still a tenth of a second behind. 
So Esme Campus has had a really good run. The Dutch girl in a fine vein of form, and Kyriasis is not going to catch her. Out of echo, she's 300s behind. Well, it got a little closer than I expected it to do. Second place for Kyriasis. Yes, Kyriasis must have had a great bottom half of the track. Once she came out of Kreisel and into the chicanes, into Echo Vaughn, she must have been picking up speed somewhere. You know, when you come through that lower labyrinth, Kurt, when you're sitting in the sled, you feel every skid and tap, so that must have felt comfortable. Yeah, right here, as you can see, she comes through the chicanes a little bit into Echo Vaughn. Christoph Longens. Reaction, always speaking with his body more than his mouth. <laughs> when things go well and when things go badly, it's easy to tell. There is Sandra. <laughs> Next up, top of the track, Christina Hengster of Austria with Alexandra Toishi on the back handles of her sled. Hengster, 2012 junior world champion, still just 26 years old. She started sliding uh, seven or eight years ago. Still got plenty of time to gain in experience. You know, Hankster's kind of been in the top 10, I guess, for the past couple of years, you know, more often than not. Gaining that experience slowly, but that experience really wasn't shown there. As again, she just waited a little bit longer than most teams would as that snow keeps falling. You want, once that green light comes up and they have 60 seconds to go, why not go with 57, 58 seconds left? Yeah, you shouldn't be struggling to be ready at that stage. As you can see, she is behind and a long way behind. Quarter of a second behind Esme Campus, Netherlands. Really having a tough time through Bendaway, almost sending Morris Code off the walls as she taps repeatedly off that left wall. 118 kilometers an hour. She needed to be up towards 120, so the gap is growing. And Kurt, part of this is she, she's 1600s down at the start, and that just multiplies that deficit as you go down the track. Absolutely. Seems to be driving fairly well after that, uh, some of her mistakes that she had through Bendaway, but uh, it's just a little bit too late. You know, 39 hundredths of a second back already. Well, that shouldn't leave her with too much problems making the second heat, and she may well end up finding that is a top 10 heat result. See, here are those S curves that we were talking about, how there's virtually no straightaway in between those curves, and they want to get nice and high in those curves. You can see the sled articulating as the front part is almost on one curve before the back end leaves the, the, the prior curve. But if you come out of S4 straight, then it come, becomes a little bit easier to go through bendaway without taking all these taps that she does off both sides of the wall. Yeah, a little bit uncomfortable. And there you see Christina Hexter. Next up is the woman who has been on the top of the podium a week ago, Kathleen Martini. She's got Janina Tischer behind her. She won last week with Stephanie Schneider, so she's comfortable to rotate her break women. Looking to win here to make it not just two in a row, but two in succession here in Koenigsegg. All the Germans should have an advantage coming from Altenburg into Koenigsegg, you know, two German tracks back to back, just like the Americans did when we went from Lake Placid to Park City. They all had success. So you'd expect these Germans to do pretty well on their two home tracks. 5.42, starting exactly the same as Sandra Kyriasis, who is now Germany 1. Closing the gap on Esme Campus, the race leader, takes a hit. And another. Now, it's almost impossible to go through Bendoa without taking either, uh, without taking any taps. In fact, it's, uh, it's recommended to take at least a couple taps. If you try to drive and thread the needle through there, then it's just too much driving. You're just killing your velocity. So a lot of times drivers will take a tap on the left, right, and left just to set themselves up for that first curve before Chrysler. So she's in the green now, pulling away. 120 Ks into the Chrysler, and she carries that speed to the line to lead by a tenth of a second. So it is Kathleen Martini from Esme Campus and Sandra Kyriasis lies in third place. Last year and last week's race winner. Doesn't seem to have lost her form in the last seven days. You know, there's a couple of big, big dogs to come down the track yet, but, uh, you know, Martini in the lead, you know, that, uh, it's a little bit of an intimidating factor for Humphreys to come down for Alana Myers. Not a great start. 
but at the same time, you know, she can she can expect to drive it pretty well. She's been on this track a number of times. She knows the secrets to those S-curves. She knows the secrets in Bendaway and also through Kreisel. The mighty Quo, a classic bit of bomb track music going on in the background as Alana Myers of the USA awaits her turn. There is Janina Tisha. The crowd down here below our commentary positions. And there is Alana Myers with Asia Evans on the back of the USA One sled. Now, these two girls should be able to get a big start up here. Yeah, despite the snow, I'd expect these girls to, to, to push that 525 star record, if not break it. Now, you can see them, though. They're waiting for that green light. As soon as they hear that green light, they're going to take off. Five twenty-five, the start record. Alana Myers and Asia Evans with a five twenty-two. <laughs> Good prediction from Kurt Tomasevich. A new start record. And Kurt, of course, the faster you're going into any snow, the better a chance you have of carrying speed through it. Yeah, definitely. That'll keep your velocity going. Even though, again, you mentioned it earlier, these, these snowflakes are tiny, so this big, heavy sled. Once you have that velocity, you need to keep that velocity going. Wow! Look at the lead she had into the bend away, but it's all gone away. Speed 117 to 120 of. Uh, Kathleen Martini, so her lead has gone down from 39 hundredths to 8 hundredths of a second. Big waves through Kreisel a little early out of that curve. She had massive speed coming out of the S's, which she got really nicely sorted, but the exit didn't help her. She's dropped down to fourth place at the line, 52-10. Well, that huge skid on the straight. That's what Mike Kahn on the right will be thinking about, and that's what Alana will be cussing about as well. Yeah, Alana wanted to keep that velocity she had at the start, and I think for the most part she was able to keep that velocity through the S-curves, but then those mistakes she made in bend away and just sent the sled sideways, you know, almost hitting both walls at the same time. Those runners are just, you know, acting like snow plows. Right here, you can see she's almost hitting both of the walls at the same time, one with the front bunk, one with the back bunk. And that's just meaning her runners are sideways, and it's it's just not the fast way to go down. Well, that just sliced four tenths of a second off the sled in an instant. Okay, that's high. Yeah, wasn't quite controlling the pressures at the right time. A little bit of a skid through the chicanes. A little bit. <laughs> hey, it's a rocky ride there for Asia Evans. Well, these girls were stripped down to their shorts to try and get the weight right in training. Next up, Kaylee Humphreys and Chelsea Valois. And Kaylee again skipped the final day of training, as she always does. And Chelsea Valois last week found out what it's like not to win in bobsledding, as an experience that she had never had up until Altenburg. Can they return to the top step? You know, a lot of times that could be a good thing. You know, the timing of that Altenburg race where she didn't win, you know, it, uh, it could really light a fire. Kelly's, excuse me, Kelly's a little bit of a dissident. You know, she can uh, really use that to, to fire, to fuel her fire and to, to really come back strong. 527 to Kathleen Martini's 542. That's a big advantage, and she's building on it nicely through the S's. Very yes. smooth out of S4. Now she'll take the tap on the left. Right and then left as she sets up to the curve right before Kreisel. Vital corner 120.4, top speed. Nobody quicker than Kaylee Humphreys. The Olympic champion is on her way. She's got a quarter second in hand and it's growing. Through the labyrinth, everything looked nice and neat and tidy. 26 hundredths of a second. Well, wow. you're right. You know, it, it stings to not win when you're used to winning. <laughs> Kelly Humphreys takes the lead by 28 hundredths of a second. She's here to prove something, definitely. That, yeah. uh, that really upset her last week coming away with a bronze medal, which, you know, honestly wouldn't upset a lot of people getting a bronze yeah. medal. But, you know, Kaylee knows that she has the expectation to, to win every race now, and that's what she's going to do. Yeah. Well, you know, nobody comes out here just to be around. You know, typically we get pretty excited about a 527 start, which is, you know, a very good start, only 200s off the previous start record. But after Alana and Asia pushed a 522, you know, we didn't, didn't notice it as quickly. Well, great speed from Alana Myers. Katie Humphreys not too far away either. And there is Chelsea Valois. What an addition she's been to the Canadian team. Katie Humphreys of Canada leads. Two German sleds down already. This is Anya Schneider-Heinzer. 
with Stephanie Schneider behind her, who won last week with Kathleen Martini. Schneider hikes a 34-year-old policewoman from Oberhof. If you notice really closely, there is a little bit of a different start technique as they actually pulled the slip backwards to them before they launched it forward. 5.28 start time, pretty good start time. So they're trying to use that rocking of the sled to, to perfect their timing. So that way both athletes know exactly when the sled's going to start moving forward. Well, she was 100th behind Kaylee Humphreys at the start. She is now tied with her out of the Schlangengruber. That's top sequence of corners. But now 900 of a second back. You can tell just how good of an S section that Kaylee had. 2Ks down as well. Kaylee was 120.4. So that means she'll lose a couple of tenths. Four tenths, wow. my goodness. See, as she went through that little section there called the chicane, she got their left runners up on the, the almost corduroy feeling section of the track, off the ice and up to the ripples. Wow, dropping right back down. Third at the start, up to second. She's now seventh. She's only just in front of Christina Hengster of Austria by three hundredths of a second. And no wonder there's no big smile there from Christoph Lang, and there won't be a big smile from Arnie schneider Heinzer either. You could trap her fingers in a door and she'd still come out grinning most of the time, but uh, she'll be a little pensive after that. And here's her section out of S4, coming into bend away. Yeah, steers it a little bit hard, comes off and hits the right side right away. Now see her sled just kind of drift a little bit to the left. Runners aren't moving sideways, but uh, you know, it's just really hard to, to keep that momentum that she had off a, a pretty decent start. Now you saw the guys going into the track behind the sleds to sweep away the worst of the snow. Kaylee Humphreys is our race leader by 28 hundreds over last year's winner Kathleen Martini. Esme Campus and Netherlands looking strong. Third place after the first run. Well, next up, another girl who uh, skipped training yesterday, the final day for Fabienne Meyer. She decided that she would rather rest up. 2008 junior world champion. She was beaten to the Swiss Women's Bobsleigh Championship title last week in Samaritz by her young teammate, Caroline Spani. Yeah, you, you mentioned it, but it's kind of interesting that some of the competitors skipped training yesterday. You know, this is a track where you know, a lot of competitors feel like they have, might have a good handle on it, and they don't want to waste a lot of energy going back-to-back -back days. Uh, so why go two days in a row if you don't have to? Well, Fabian Mayer, more experienced of the two Swiss drivers, but what she's not is a big start at 5.44 getaway. It's a couple of hundred slower than Martini and Kyriasis. You know, and I think the snow is lightening up just a little bit, so, you know, that might be an advantage for these, some of these sleds that come down a little bit later in the competition. Very good speed, Kurt, into the Chrysler, 120.1, so will this gap come down by a tenth or two? You know, already she's 34 hundredths of a second back, but Kaylee had such a smoking run that, you know, she might be here, here be in the top five, top three. Tucks her head under the cowl, 51.75. Like you say, sometimes getting beaten is one of the best things that can happen to you, and being uh, beaten in the Swiss Championships might have reignited the burners. You don't need much incentive when you're a bobsledder because this is a pretty visceral sport anyway. She looks pretty happy with that. You can hear, see once again we're looking at S4, curve nine. She comes very straight out of there, but that back end of the slip breaks away just a little bit. Again, it's very hard to thread that needle and to come out perfectly. Wow, the track worker's coat almost hanging into her face. He's got to be careful and tuck yeah. that in. Well, one of the great things about being at this track is it's so low and you can be right beside it. <laughs> Do try, ladies and gentlemen, not to be actually in it. Yeah, great for the fans, not so good for the drivers and the competitors. Team GB1 next, Paula Walker and Kelly Denyer with Jill Cook, last week's break woman, taking a, a rest week. She cracked her back up a little in their crash, 12 to 13. It wasn't a crash, it was the big hit out of 13 that did the damage. She's OK, but Kelly on the back handles here with Paula. Well, snow is starting to fade away a little, so this could help the British girls get in among the top six. She was third after heat one in Altenburg. See what she can produce here. Pretty smooth load into the sled of 539. Not an awesome start, but, you know, rank of six right now, which puts her right about in the middle of the pack. Well, faster than two of the three German sleds. 
Now she's got to use that opportunity. 1,200s behind Kaylee Humphreys, up to 16th, but a good bend away could really help, and that was a great exit. Takes the tap. Very Those nice. Skids. Speed, 119.5. That's not bad at all. She minimizes the waves through the Chrysler. There's usually three pressures through Chrysler. A lot of times you'll see that sled kind of wave up and down, but she was fairly smooth there, so this is a pretty good run for Paula. Of course, she's got to re-establish herself, drop the sled out of a potential podium finish last week, and this speed is all about what's going on between years. 51-81 slide, and that leaves her tied with Sandra Kyriasis on a German track. That's not bad. It's Kaylee Humphreys, Kathleen Martini, Fabian Meyer, then Esme Campus, and a tie for fifth, Kyriasis, and Paula Walker of Great Britain. Well, Kurt, you know, the, the old phrase, get back on the horse that threw you, and that's exactly what she's had to do now. Yeah, we mentioned it, not an awesome start, but she really drove these S-curves really well and kept that velocity, that speed that she did have from curve two into curve three, excuse me, S2 into S3, and now into S4. Wow, you can see how that sled just really articulates and that brakeman gets whipped around pretty quick. There is Paula and Pirate's daughter, Kelly Denyer. Ah. <laughs> Our 11th starter in a field of 21 sleds here at a snowy Koenigsegg in Bavaria. Jasmine Fenlater of the USA with Lolo Jones behind Jazz from Ewing, New Jersey. Olympic champion Kurt Tomasevich alongside me here. And Kurt, these girls are looking for another big start. The addition of these new brake women from, from the summer uh, disciplines track and field has really helped reinvigorate the team. They definitely have a lot of speed coming into this. The snow is lightened up a lot, so they really should have a great start time, maybe in the high 520s. 534. A little behind what I ex what I'd, would expect, but, you know, Jasmine did have a, a little bit of a rough practice week this week, had a couple of uh, mishaps and crashes, but, uh, you know, maybe that's in the back of her mind. But for the most part, you know, she uh, she's really looking to do well here. Not a bad exit onto the straight. Long skid, though. Takes the natural tap, setting her up for the Chrysler curve. Now, this is where she had a little bit of trouble. She wasn't able to control those waves throughout most of practice and had some trouble right here. But nice very smooth coming out of there. Not bad. Little rocky through the S's at the bottom. Fifth spot slipped a little to sixth position behind Kyriasis and Walker. Now, just behind teammate Alana Myers in eighth place. And in front of her two teammates, Jasmine Fenlay to seventh, Alana Myers eighth, Jamie Grubel ninth for Team USA, ahead of Anya Schneiderheinzer, which will not please Anya one little bit. She kept things neat and tidy, and the one problem she had in training most of all was getting the cries all right, and she pretty much had that nailed. Yeah, that seemed to be almost the best part of her trip right there. Very smooth right there into the chicanes. Now a little bit high on that second chicane. You see her left runner is getting way up on the wall and almost off the bottom of the track. Well, Kurt, those corners come at you so fast. If one's wrong, they're all wrong. Yeah, there's not a lot of break between those S-curves especially, but in the chicanes and into the bottom part of the track too. It's really quick. And there's Lolo and Jasmine Fenlater. 12 spot for Astrid Radjenovic and a double world champion behind her on the brakes, Jana Pittman, twice world champion of 400 meters hurdles and another summer Olympic addition to bobsledding. And behind Astrid, this is her first ever race. She came into headshots for the team a couple of days ago and we say, you know, when did you start bobsledding? And normally we ask for the year. In her case, it was the day because <laughs> she's only had a couple of trips down an ice track ever in her life so she's hoping that she will develop along with her driver to produce quicker and quicker starts as the season continues Astrid back with her familiar green sled maybe old but she knows how it handles well 548 getaway not an awesome start, but, you know, if you're only in the sport for a, you know, a couple months, a couple weeks, that, uh, you know, you only have room for improvement. And she'll, she'll learn to be able to use that speed and her strength in order to give a great start time. Yeah, we're not talking weeks. We're talking days still <laughs> for Yana. So a little uh, rattly down the wall for Astrid. She could have done without that. 118-1. That's not too bad. Fastest speed since the cries mean 120s. She's drifted out to six tenths away. 
This is a really good run. I mean, other than the, the start time that was a little bit far back, there's not a lot to point out as, as far as huge mistakes where she's losing time, but these just little small mistakes are starting to add up, and she crossed the line in 12th place. 52-41 slide, which is right about where she was training. And the problem was that the real problem, uh, the straight, you know, we saw that a, a good skid down the straight can take four tenths out of you, and that probably happened to Astrid. True, that, that will kill all that velocity that she almost didn't have at the start. But, you know, as she comes through the S's, they're so quick, it's, it's really hard for coaches, let alone, you know, TV commentary, to, to be able to pick out some of those mistakes. See, even though she's skidding back and forth, she's not doing a whole lot of driving right there, which could be good and bad. Sometimes drivers want to correct, uh, but at the same time, it's really easy to oversteer in a bobsled. Snow continues to fall outside the start area here at Koenigsegg, Bavaria. This is the new Swiss women's bobsleigh champion, Caroline Spani, with Ariane Walser behind her. And Caroline, an ex brake woman turned driver a couple of years ago after the Vancouver Games. And she is ripping off some very big starts in San Moritz. And this young Swiss driver, Kurt Tomasevich, really could ignite their program. Yeah, Swiss women haven't had a whole lot of success in the last few years, which is a little bit disappointing. Really early into that first curve, you can see the back end of the sled kind of jumped up onto the curve. Not real smooth. 600s back from Kaylee Humphreys at the start, brings it down to 500s. Has that bump cost her? She is closing wow. 400s back. Wow, World Championships in Samarit start in two weeks' time. 120.1, really good speed from the City of Sled. A little bit of a wave through Kreisel, but 700s of a back. That's, that's Still incredible. in second place. Don't forget, this is her second year as a driver. Wow. I mean, I don't want to take too much away, but the snow's lightening up. You know, the Swiss yeah. sleds usually do well on this track. A lot is just kind of going in her favor right now. 26 hundredths of a second. Wow. wow. Still in second place. She lost a tenth of a second down in that last element. You saw Eric Allard there, who's been confirmed now. His part-time job as Swiss coach is a full-time job. And two big thumbs up there from Caroline Spani. <laughs> well, you know when you get out of a sled, Kurt, how good it feels. You know you're fast. You don't have to ask. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, you know, when you, when you start the start the race 13th off the hill and cross the line in second place. That's a really great feeling. Through the Kreisel, keeps a nice constant line. A little bit of a wave, but sometimes that wave isn't a bad thing. It can set you up nice and high to come out of the exit of a curve. Okay, look, a couple of rattles. That's where that cost uh, maybe those two tenths that went adrift. Wow. Caroline Sparney. Hot Swiss, we should be saying there. <laughs> now, next up, uh, Jennifer Cacchetti and Kate O'Brien. Little messages to the family back home. Canada 2 sled. And as you can see, it's still snowing pretty heavy at the top. But the camera is looking a long way up to the start. And so that foreshortening effect makes it look heavier than it really is. Honestly, it's really hard to tell kind of from that angle, but uh, it looks like Giacchetti might have taken the sled just a little bit deeper than most of the other drivers, which causes the brake to run a little bit farther. And we mentioned in the, the pre-race discussion how that flat part of the start is, is really critical. You want to be in the sled before that flat part comes along because it's just going to kill your velocity if you're still running on that flat part. Well, Jennifer, of course, started driving after winning the gold as brake woman to Kelly Humphreys in Vancouver, went back onto the back handles of the sled to win the World Championship last year in Lake Placid before continuing her driving career. And like Kaylee, like Alana, we've got so many now women drivers who started off as big power athletes. It's what you need. Yeah, that's definitely the direction that the sport is going, using great strong brakemen to become great strong push athletes out in the driver's bar too. I'm well, afraid to say the pizza we bought them last night doesn't seem to have worked <laughs> magic. 52, 22, 13th place. Well, we tried. Ran into the girls last night in uh, a fabulous restaurant in Bershtis Garden, run by the sister of ex-skeleton slider, Miki Halilovic. Look at the start. Now, a lot of the drivers would like to load right where that pole is on the left side of the driver. Jenny maybe takes it about a step or two. I, it might not be as deep as I thought it was as I looked at it initially, but uh, you know, it's a very tricky part as you, the sled comes onto that flat part. 
There are the girls. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a double step. You see it dips down quickly and then flattens out onto the old part of where the start used to be. And that becomes really difficult in four men when you have four guys trying to get into the sled. You know, run it as deep as you can, but get in the sled before that flat part. And a massive bottleneck right there as well. Olga Stulneva with Yulia Timofeva. You can hear the track playing a bit of balalaika music in the background for the Russian team. And Olga's husband, Alexei Stulnev, is here this weekend, back on World Cup duty as well. And uh, I'm not going to blow it just yet, but he's got a big surprise on the back of his sled tomorrow. And let's see what these Russian girls can produce in the start, Kurt, because that's really where they need more work than perhaps anywhere else. 540, a rank of 10, you know, she didn't run it as deep as Jennifer Cicchetti, but you know, maybe that was a little bit too shallow. She could have taken it a few more steps. She was another 400-meter relay runner, took silver in the Athens Games. And again, you know, track sprinters are famous for not carrying weight, whereas bobsleigh bob athletes, mass moves mass. You need some power. Exactly. You know, you need a lot of power and strength in order to, to move a 400-pound sled. Track athletes, a lot of times, even though they have that speed, they don't have that strength. And it takes, a, you know, a couple years to develop not just the mass, but good mass. You want that muscle mass. Not just, you know, anybody can you know, eat a bunch of cookies and cake and put on some pounds, but, uh, you know, you want to be able to add that muscle in order to be able to push that sled. What are you telling me? My all worst diet isn't going to do me any good. 52 15 for the Russian sled, 12th place. Well, you're talking about your pizza diet last night. I don't know if that's, that suffices. Oh, uh, well, I have to say, I didn't have the pizza. The girls came in for pizza. I had uh, a fabulous rack of lamb and chicken some... salad. No, 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 no. John Morgan had the salad. August Stulneva then in 12th spot of our 15 sleds. And we're now starting to get into that dangerous territory where one wrong move might leave you out of the race. She looks pretty smooth on the exit there. And a lot of times you have to laugh at some of the ways that drivers try to shave off just a hundredth of a second. They're coming out of that finish curve and there's no more driving to do, so they try to just disappear and get their helmet completely out of the way for aerodynamics. And you can see some people try to duck underneath the cowling. That time, she really just leaned back and tried to, to become part of the sled that way. Well, if she picked up 200, she would have vaulted in front of Anya Schneiderheinzer. It might have been worth it. of yeah. a second, yeah, absolutely. Over nearly a, a that, mile of, of distance. Yeah, that probably kept her in front of Christina Hengster of Austria. Well, next up, Elfie Williamson with Hannah Marion, another summer Olympian. One more used to the warm confines of a velodrome, though. She's a track cyclist. And how track cyclist quads turn into ice sprinters quads that is going to be uh, a period of development for her. You know, first couple steps there, nice low heel recovery, not a lot of time in the air, which is, again, a difference between track athletes and bobsled athletes. They want to spend as much time on the ice as possible driving that sled where a track athlete wants to be in the air as long as possible. Well, you guys, when you're pushing, you are almost always in that explosive off-the-blocks phase that a sprinter would have. You know, for the whole distance, you, you're still in that low-down driving forward. Yeah, a lot of people think, well, you need great high-end speed to be a good bobsledder, but that's not the case. You want to be able to get to your high-end speed as fast as possible. You need great acceleration, not necessarily great velocity. In car terms, we're talking torque rather than raw horsepower. It's the ability to move the mass, not so much just to accelerate yourself. 4,600 behind, drifting away, though, another tenth of a second. That labyrinth didn't treat her very well. Still a top ten run, though, 52-09. Yanis Minin's the coach, looked pretty happy with that. And do you know what? Alfie Williamson will have to as well. Yeah, we talked about it earlier, how the, you know, the, the early snow piles might have hurt some of the... First sleds off the hill, but now the snow's getting lighter and lighter. And these last five, six, seven sleds might have an advantage because that snow just isn't piling up in the grooves through bend away at the start. And uh, if they can take advantage of that, they can maybe slip into the top ten, just like Elfie did. Well, that'll be great for some of the smaller nations looking down into the S's. This was neat as well. Yeah, the chicane right there, you can see that last part, how many of the sleds were popping that left, left side of their sled way up into the wall. But she was able to control that pretty well and keep it on all four runners. Well, next up, the first of our two Romanian sleds here for a tiny bobsledding nation. They are really keeping their girls in the money on the ice. Maria Constantin with Andrea Grecu behind her. And Maria now up to Romania 1. She's the younger of the two Romanian drivers. But she has overtaken her more experienced teammate. Probably 
don't expect to see a great start time here. Maybe in the 540s. A great woman breaks in the Youth Olympic Games for Maria's younger sister, in fact. 558 getaway. They are both still fairly light. And McCain, you know, feel still fairly young. And particularly for female athletes, that power and athleticism does take a few years longer to produce than for the men. Yeah, on the men's side, we can call it old man strength because it always seems like no matter how strong you are, your dad is always stronger than you. But uh, you know, on the women's side, that, that's the same case. You know, they need to get stronger and stronger. And sometimes, no matter how many weights you lift when you're younger, that strength just doesn't come until you get a little bit older. Well, guys have the advantage of having all that testosterone from youth, whereas it doesn't cut in with the women uh, quite so early. 1.1 behind, 17th place at the moment, so behind Ras Astrid Ranjenovic by 21 hundredths of a second, 31 hundredths of a second. 52-7-2, Paul Niagu on the right-hand side is the coach and part sponsor of the Romanian team as well. Himself a former Romanian bobsled pilot. Well, Kurt, when you're a young nation, it, it, there's no no one magic bullet. If we fix that, everything will be fine. It's everything that needs to progress at the same speed, right? Yeah, and sometimes a lot of that is coaching too. You know, you don't have those experienced athletes to to try to help you and you know give you those little tidbits to to help you you know push the sled faster, to drive the sled better. You know, it, you know, there's just a lot of small things that don't help you along the way. Kelly Humphreys, our race leader, from Caroline Sparney, the new Swiss bobsled champion and last year's winner, Kathleen Martini. And now our World Cup rookie, 19-year-old Misha McNeil from Concert County Durham with Sarah Adams. Uh, she's also got Fran Slater here with her who raced in the Youth Olympic Games where they took the bronze medal. Misha bronze in the Junior Worlds as well, her first ever World Cup start. And she's staying here in Koenigsegg next week to race in Europa Cup. 5.46 getaway. Yeah, not a great start, but you know, for speaking of their age and their inexperience, you know, a 5.46, that's uh, that's not too horrible. And hopefully she can hold that velocity. But going to that first curve, you saw how the back end of the sled really skidded around to the left. It's not real fast. She's had a couple of crashes in training, and uh, she's got through the first of the danger points, rattles her way down the straight. And for her first World Cup race, of course, she's got the pressure trying to make the heat as well. 116.4. We've seen it. Just about everybody else has come through quicker than that. Again, rattles away through the lower labyrinth. A lot of G-force pushing into that Echovan corner toward the end. You know, it's a force of nature that just presses that brake down into the bottom of the slit. 18th place at the moment, 53-02. Well, the good news is they got down without using their heads. Pete Gunn on the left and Lee Johnson on the right, who's coaching the youth and development teams. He's really, really impressed with this young lady. So she's got a massive future. See, out of S4, into the bend away, a little bit early out of S4, it caused her to hit the right side of the wall. And out of Kreisel, stick to the left side just a little bit long, but not too bad, but you know, that'll set her up late going through the chicanes right here. Sends her up into that last curve, or excuse me, last two curves right before the big high pressure Echo Von. Well, there is Misha on the left. Kind of a shame that they're not going to Eagles next week. That's where she raced in the Youth Olympics and Junior Worlds and got a bronze in each. It's a track that she knows a lot better than this. Next up, last three sleds. Anastasia tambov saver of Russia, Ludmila Udobkina behind her. In fact, two of the three Russian sleds from 19 down to 21. Let's see what they can produce. Uh, far start in the field from Alana Myers and Asia Evans, 5.22. And if they can get within two tenths of that, they will consider themselves to have done a reasonably good job, I think. Yeah, you know, each week, Martin, we've talked about how the Russian women's side is just a little bit of a disappointment. You see the six in front of her sled. That means last year her World Cup ranking was number six, and now she's, you know, going off the hill on the, in the 19th position. Yeah, you know, that, that's really difficult thing to see because you know they have great equipment great sleds you know the sled she's in was given to fly but uh, it's just she just hasn't found a way to make it click yet this year takes the steer out of s4 down the straightaway and just about gets it tidied up 118 kilometers an hour no quicker than maria constantine of romania maria with less experience and you've got to believe a much older and cheaper sled 
17th place at the moment out of 18 slits. Yeah, she's just falling back. You know, her rank was 13 at the start, falls back to 16 and 17, climbs back well, one position to 16th place, but again, you can tell by the look on the coach's face, they just, just haven't had a whole lot to smile about this year. But dug the fat out of the fire for herself there below the Chrysal, kept herself in the race. She will get a second run. There's an awful lot to think about, though. And the choice of replay is wide open, pretty much any corner. Here we're going to look at S4, curve nine. And right away, just takes that tap off the right wall, sends her to a skid on you know, the back end of the sled, not following the front part of the sled. She's steering to keep it over on the right to try and avoid too many taps. Coach's face says it all. Anastasia not exactly looking thrilled either. But here's the second Romanian then, Juan Giacanu. A more experienced and uh, by a year the older of the two. As her birthday next week, she turns 23. And Christine Spataru behind her, another young ex track and field athlete. Well, this will be sled 20. We need to finish in front of Misha McNeil of Great Britain to guarantee a second run. Juan and Christina probably not looking for a great start time here either. Their teammates went 558. These girls go exactly the same, 5.58. But then this is one of the things that is going to drive a team on, OK? There's probably only five or six girls travelling together and occasionally with their coach. But when you're racing against each other primarily, you know, it's, it's, it's bonus points if you can outstart your teammates and outdrive them. True, competition does breed success, even if their competition is for 14th, 15th, 16th place. For both Romanian teams, you know, being down at the bottom end of the pile, you're looking at making the race 117-4. A little quicker than the British girls at the moment, but they are in 20th spot. So they will complete the race. Then she can find a bit more pace at the bottom than Misha McNeil did, and she's up to 19th in front of the GB2 sled, and the line stays in 19th, 52-8-4. Yeah, I was able to climb up one position. I thought the way she was losing speed and losing time, she wasn't going to be able to, to stay ahead of McNeil, but uh, she did slip past her just by about 1800s. Well, she avoided the rocky ride through the lower labyrinth, and that guarantees her a second run with one sled to go. Here was, I think, one of her biggest mistakes. From S1 into, excuse me, S1 into S2, she kind of clipped the wall between those two, and it's, it's not a good thing if you have time to hit the wall when there's a non-existent straightaway between two curves. Yeah. So the Romanians guaranteed the second heat for both their sleds, and the final runner in this first of two heats here in Koenigsegg, Bavaria, Ekaterina Kostromina. She's got Anna Pumatova behind her. And talking to coach Malcolm Lloyd this morning, saying uh, Kostromina really struggling in training. 25 years old, again, her birthday on the 19th, so just after we leave Eagles. And once again, we talked about it for a few other sleds, that green light, you heard that bell go off, that little ding-dong. Now these girls are just, just waiting, and it's you know, already been about 10, 15 seconds of the snow just continuing to pile up, even though the snow is much lighter. Well, when you're battling to make it into the race, every hundredth counts. 5.57, she's right in there battling with the Romanians in terms of start. What can she find for a drive? Nineteenth at the start, remains 19th as she comes onto the straight. Pretty smooth through the S's. I say pretty smooth, that's kind of a relative term. She wasn't as smooth as Kaylee Humphreys or Kathleen Martini, of course, but, you know, for, for battling for the upper teens position, you know, that's not too bad. 118.3 is not great speed. Has she got enough to stay in the race? 18th place at the moment, so she looks like she's going to make it, barring a major disaster. Continues to be in 18th place. It's going to be hard to wreck. Once you've gone through the labyrinth, you're pretty much going to make it all the way down. 52.57 for her. She is in in 18th place. 
And unfortunately for GB2's Misha McNeils and Sarah Adams, 21st means that they will not get a second run here in their World Cup debut race in Koenigsegg. From S3 into S4, I believe that was looking at. Fairly smooth. You've got to get that steer in early, otherwise the corner just comes right at you like a brick wall. It's a distinctive look of that uh, Vimmer sled with that peak across the top. Here is our race leader then. Kaylee Humphreys of Canada leads off the first of our two heats here in Koenigsee, Bavaria. The Olympic champion from 2010 looking to start another run of successes with victory here in this oldest artificial ice track. Well, after defeat last week, Kelly put in a magnificent first effort. She leads her closest rival by a quarter of a second. Last year's winner, Kathleen Martini, nearly a third of a second back. Well, don't forget, stay with us. You can catch all the action from that second heat. Can be pretty close battle for the medals. Whether anybody will catch Kelly Humphreys or not might, to some degree, depend on the weather. You can join Kurt Tomasevich and me, Martin Haven, for the second and deciding heat and find out who is going to be moving up this tightly packed field and who will slip down the order. There we go, 20 down to one. So Juanu Diakanu of Romania will be the first off the hill. Misha McNeils and Sarah Adams will unfortunately be watching from the sidelines. But join us, please, for the second heat here, round seven of the Wiesmann FIBT Women's Skeleton World Cup.